Hi, I'm Jeremy Kahn, and I wanted to show you guys some interesting stuff that I found regarding uh, performance and animations uh, with, with, with CSS and JavaScript, and some different variations as to uh, how they affect the overall you know, runtime of whatever you're working on. I've built this little uh, test harness here. Um, I built this using a library of mine called Recapy, uh, and it's useful here because it creates the same animations in both CSS keyframes as well as an, um, you know, standard uh, JavaScript uh, inline style based animations. So all I have is this, I have to do is like turn on this little this little checkbox here, and I can uh, change how the animation is running. So these are both pretty similar. Uh, it goes from top left to bottom right, and this one does the same thing but changes the color. So the whole point of this is to show you how um, changing certain properties affects the performance. So let's let, let's get into it. Let's stop this and reset it. So I've got the Chrome Dev Tools open here. Um, if I start recording on um, uh, my frames and I start animating a, a regular JavaScript animation, then we can see there's a lot going on here. Uh, it's, it's getting a pretty decent frame rate, but that's because there's not actually that much going on. Um, it, it's a pretty simple animation. But let's, uh, let's pause this and stop the animation. Let's, let's examine what's going on here. But if you look at all of the, uh, the events for this, if we highlight this, this is where I started actually running the animation. I was just kind of talking here before, but here's where the animation is actually running. We can see that there's a lot of events going on. So um, it just kind of repeats itself over and over again. Uh, animation frame fire, recalculate style, layout, paint, composite layers, and then over and over and over again. Now, it's not really hurting the performance for this animation because it's really simple. It's just one box moving um, you know, from, one net, from one point to another. But if you had a lot of stuff going on, this might slow things down. Uh, so if we clear this out and we use a CSS keyframe animation and we run the same thing, we can see that it looks the same. And we'll start recording here. And uh, we can see there's actually a lot less going on here. So I'll pause this again so we can examine it. Uh, but from like two seconds to three seconds here, there, there's really no events. It's only when the, uh, the keyframe animation loops that we see a recalculate style and composite. There's no, um, there's no painting, there's no layouting. Uh, there's a lot less going on with uh, a CSS keyframe animation. And also, the, the other interesting thing that I noticed is that if you look at the memory here, it's totally flat. It never changes. Um, it does some stuff at the beginning here to, to compute the CSS string, and that's, uh, that's just what Recapy does. Um, but if we compare this to a regular JavaScript animation, we run it again and uh, clear this out. We can see there's a lot of memory being allocated and deallocated via garbage collection, getting this, uh, this sawtooth pattern. So again, if we switch here and uh, run the same animation, it's totally flat. So while CSS animations may not be fundamentally better in every respect, there are certain areas where they do win. They are much better with memory management. Here we can see that we just garbage collected. Um, so if that's a concern, you know, CSS animations may be something that you want to consider. The other interesting thing about this, uh, this little setup that I've got here is let's, uh, let's clear this out again. Now, if I run a, a CSS animation that changes the color, that actually creates a new layer that then has to be recomposited and sent over to the GPU, and that's slow. So let's run this guy. It's, it's a similar animation. Let's uh, clear this out again. Um, and it's going from, in addition from moving from one point to another, it's going from red to blue. And if we look at the events, we can see there's a lot going on here. So let's, uh, let's pause this. Now here, we can see a lot of uh, recalculate and composite layers. There, there's a lot of data here, so I'm actually just going to clear this out to make it a little bit easier to see. And then I'm going to restart this. And then I'm going to start recording. OK, cool. So let's pause this and pause this. Now before, when I was just animating uh, the transform and not the color, it was only doing uh, a, a recalculate style and composite layer every time that the animation looped. But for this animation, because it's also changing the color, it creates a new layer that, it gets, that has to get repainted and then re-uploaded to the GPU. So that's a performance hit. If there's a lot of stuff going on, uh, this is a more sophisticated animation, it would be a lot slower. So we can just see it's looping again and again 
again, this is not a JavaScript animation. This is a, a pure CSS animation, but it's compositing layers and recalculating style every single frame. Uh, now, the memory is still, is still flat, but you know, it, it takes more CPU power to actually get this, this layer over to the GPU. If we clear this out one more time and we run uh, the, the, same, uh, the same more sophisticated animation with the color as the JavaScript animation, we get pretty similar results uh, as before. So let's run this and start recording. Now again, there's still a lot of events. Um, it, so this is the slowest of all the animations that I've shown you, a, a, a pure JavaScript animation that changes both uh, the color and the, uh, the transform. And if we look at how this thing's working, it's pretty similar to the original, um, uh, the, the original animation that I showed you, but we can also see that we've got this new, this new paint setup event that's going on every frame. I'm not actually sure what that's doing, but it's apparently related to the, uh, to the paint event that immediately follows it. So the point is, uh, through, this, th through this demonstration, is that it is more expensive to, uh, to animate uh, a color or you know, any, um, any element or any property beyond just the transform, the opacity, or the filter properties. So if, if you're going to animate something, if you want it to be fast, which you pretty much always do, then you're just going to stick to animating the transform, the filter, or the opacity because animating anything else, such as like uh, a border or um, you know a font size or something like that, or a, a, you know, a background in this case, it causes more work that has to be done. So it has to do this paint setup in this case, and um, yeah, it's, it's just more work than and that that's going to hurt your frame rate. So generally, just keep it simple. If you're animating things, consider using a CSS animation. Um, and even then, just stick to using uh, transform, filter, and opacity. Well, I hope you found this, this helpful. Thanks.